I've done something. Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. So today I've got something exciting to share with you because I've done something. So I've been wanting a freestanding um, mixer for literally ever. Um, and I never had the space, obviously I was a student as well, so I just like, ugh, I didn't bother. But now that I've moved into my own place, finished uni, I thought that I would treat myself to a graduation present. Um, it's a graduation present from my grandma, my mum and myself. And uh, yeah, I have bought a Kenwood, what's it called, Kenwood Titanium Chef Patissier XL stand mixer. Oh my god, I actually can't believe that I bought this. <laughs> there we go. Easy. Boop. Oh my god. It's here. So, here is um, the mixer that I bought. So, I thought what I would do is that I would unbox it on camera. Um, and then kind of show you guys what's in it and then hopefully when I start baking um, with it soon um, you will see how, how I get on with it and if it's any good or not which I very much hope it is because um, it wasn't cheap okay um, let's get some scissors get rid of this plastic first So I've got my instructions. Right, I think I'm gonna have to put it back down and then lift it out. Oh, hang on. Ah, okay. Right, okay, so here that's the door hook. Not ideal on a glass table. Paddle attachment. This must be another attachment. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to actually put this down. <coughs> I'm not sure how to get it out. Oh my god. Where do you let where do, where can you hold it? I can hold it from underneath. Well, it's out. Oh, and a nice wee spatula as well. Right, okay. I think this out. Okay, right. Let's open this, this bad boy up. Okay, so this is like the top bit um, that you kind of put so that not everything flies out. Oh my god, that is like a super cool flap so that you can add stuff in whilst you're cooking, uh, whilst you're baking, or uh, whilst you're mixing and you don't have to take it off and put it in again. That's nice. Okay, and now, ah yes, so this machine comes with two bowls, um, which is always helpful, and one of them um, heats up. So one of the benefits of this thing is that it has a heating function. So it, it, it could, you could use it like if you're if you're melting chocolate or if you're making Swiss meringue or something. Um, but for me, the main reason why I wanted something that warms up was because I do so much bread baking, and then you can use the machine to prove the bread. So you can warm the bowl and leave the dough in the machine, and then it'll um, prove it or speed up the proving. Um, and since my flats are normally quite cold, um, this is something I really, really wanted. So yeah. I don't think that was meant to happen. Okay, so this is this is the front bit. Ah, okay. It's like attached with a mic. This is where you can put front attachments. Okay, I'll just I'll unpack it and then I'll I'll give you a better show. Oh wow. Fancy man.
Okay, so this is everything here. So I've got the mixer, which comes with a front attachment thing. And then there's also a space to add attachments at the top. Um, this is then where you insert the mixing bowl. Um, the machine comes with two bowls, so this, I think this is like five litres. This doesn't have, this doesn't heat up, but then there's this like massive 7.9, I think it's 7.8 or 7.9 litre um, capacity bowl, which warms up. And then the bot, it also came with like um, this, um, they can see me, <laughs> the, this uh, dough scraper and a spatula. And then we have a um, sort of balloon whisk attachment, a paddle attachment, and there's this thing which I think you should be able to like attach to the paddle to um, scrape the sides of the bowl, but I still need to figure out how to put that on. Um, a dough hook attachment, oops, and then um, this attachment here, which looks kind of funky and I'm not entirely sure what to use it for. But um, it does come with instructions and, ever, and some recipes, so yeah, I'll, I'll read through those and, um, and I'm sure it'll tell me. So later on, everything will be done via this touch screen here. Um, I've not plugged it in yet, um, but then you, you, you'll be able to choose settings here, but I think you'll also be manually able to change things using the knob. And um, then it switches on at the back. And then if you pr press that lever at the back, it opens up. Oops. And then um, the bowl just clicks in at the bottom. And for those of you who have a KitchenAid, like I'm quite, I'm familiar with KitchenAids, it has like a similar, sorry, I had to use both hands, but it clicks in the same way as it does um, in the KitchenAid. And then when you want to release it, you press it up and then twist so that this hook comes like out again. Uh, so very easy, very easy to use. Okay, so this is it here. I've just put in the smaller bowl and added the whisk attachment. It looks really nice. Um, it works in a similar way as the KitchenAid. Like um, I'm familiar with kitchen, how KitchenAids work because we have one um, at my parents' house. And um, so yeah, the, you can uh, just slide in the bowl um, and just turn it in as you would with a KitchenAid. And then um, you also attach the attachments in the same way. Um, but yeah, this came with like quite a few attachments and like I um, just showed in my video, the opportunity to add further Kenwood attachments to the top. And believe it or not, I did also really, really want a um, food processor and a liquidizer. And that's why I decided to go for the Kenwood rather than KitchenAid because, well, A, I wanted this one which had the heated function and B, I wanted one that um, could have these attachments. And I have actually bought a food processor and a liquidizer as well. So I'm gonna open those up next. Oh, and I actually forgot to say, another thing that this mixer has is an inbuilt scale. So you can actually weigh things directly in the bowl and it, over, uh, the touch display will kind of tell you how much it is. So you don't even need to like use a separate scale, pair of scales and everything. So yeah, absolutely mental. Um, but yeah, let's, let's have a look at the food processor and the liquidizer. Okay, so we have a thermal resist blender chef attachment. Okay, so this must be that this is the liquidizer. <sighs> One, and then this is the food process. Where am I gonna put all these things? Where am I gonna put all the boxes? Oh my god. Ah, Alina, what have you done? <laughs> right, okay, let's open the food processor first. Um, and then we should see if we can um, pick it on there. Okay, again, instructions. Whoa, <laughs> look at these. I hope they're just in like 50 languages because, yeah. It's like, how am I gonna read all of that? Okay, so I've got the little funnel and stuff to stick on top, or oh, that'll be to like push things down into the food processor. Okay, so this is the, this must be like the attachment that hooks on top of the machine. 
And here's the bowl. It's actually smaller than I have expected, which is maybe probably a good thing. Like I don't, maybe probably, probably a good thing. Um, since I don't have that much space, and this is probably going to be more than enough. I forget how many liters it was. Blades already in there, and then there's more stuff here. Ah, I forgot about this. Yeah, so these are the different graters. Um, so I can grate things or slice things and this is just a, another a second type of grater and that's cool and what's in here more graters how many do i need <laughs> oh, okay this one's a nice one this is probably good for like carrot cake and um, for grating carrots and stuff but yeah i will have to see what all of these individual ones do oh this looks kind of dangerous <laughs> Okay, I'll figure that out later. Let's first see if we can actually get this attached to, to the machine. So I'll bring that closer. Right, so this thing, I mean, I could read the instructions, right, but. <laughs> nah, I'm sure it can't be that difficult. Famous last words. Oh, there we go. Okay. I kind of want to, nah, I won't plug it in right now. I need to, I need to wash things first, but I'm just wanting to try it. Perfect. Okay, that must be it. Cool, cool, that was easy. And then yeah, you can just process whatever you want. Make pesto or make short crust pastry. Oh my God, imagine doing short crust pastry and not having to rub the, in the butter with your hands. Oh, the life. Right, and then. Okay, easy enough. I'll put that away and now let's try the liquidizer. So, next up, liquidizer. Oh, so much stuff. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, Grandma and Mum, hey? And myself. Thank you. Right. Oh, okay, this is the top, top, the top of the liquidizer. Ah, oh, so this is something that I'm very intrigued by. You know if you watch, another massive set of instructions. You know if you watch MasterChef or something similar, they all have these kind of, almost like spatula things inside the mixture that they can, that they can, so it almost, it's almost like a ball and socket joint. You kind of put this on top of the mixture and then you can like move it around like so and you can scrape down the sides of the food processor uh, the liquidizer even whilst it's like running um, so you always see that on, on MasterChef and things like that so um, yeah oh so cool oh nice ooh it's glass it's actually heavy thermal resist okay so that must mean you can you know put hot stuff in it and cold stuff and everything oh epic okay Oh, there's a lot more um, bits to this. Ah, okay, so that's the blade. And that looks like it must... Nope. Okay, it might be that for this one. I need to check the instructions. Ah, okay, no, got it. This looks promising. Oh, it's heavy. It is made of glass. Nice. Oh, I can make a smoothie with it, not in my mini, mini processor, which every time, like the other day, I actually, um, uh, the fuse blew after I was trying to liquidize too much in the tiny mixer. So glad those days are over. No, this, this isn't right. What's missing? I'm definitely I'm missing a piece. I don't think so. Ah, ta-da! Right, there's a liquidizer, and then it comes with this uh, lid. Always helpful. <laughs> a lid. Ah, okay, and then so then either you can put on the stopper, or you can use this mental thing. Ah yeah, see? Ah, oh, so cute! 
Oh, I can't wait to try all of these things. I hope. Ah, oh, right. Okay, I think I'll just leave it at that um, for now. I just wanted to sort of um, unbox it on camera and um, to show you what I got. And hopefully now over the next couple of weeks, months, years that I will be using this machine um, and baking things, I can kind of show you um, the different functions of it and how well it works, hoping it works well of course, and um, if I like it or not, if I would recommend it or not. But um, yeah, oh my god, I bought my first ever kitchen machine. Okay, my camera battery actually just died, so probably just as well that I finished this video. But yeah, I just wanted to show you what I've got. Um, and now I'm gonna deal with all this stuff, read all the instructions. I have so many boxes like everywhere. I'm gonna have to um, decide um, what to do with those. But um, yeah, this is like, super exciting. I'm so excited about this um, thing. And yeah, I can't wait to bake something with it. So yeah, I will let you know as soon as I do that. Okay, so the first thing I tried to make in my new Kenwood was an enriched dough and here you can see how the weighing function works. So on the screen um, it tells you um, the weight in grams and then you just add um, whatever you want to your bowl and then you can just zero the scales again um, before adding the next. So that is really straightforward. And then you can just add the attachment, so in this case I use the door hook attachment and then you lower the sort of arm of the Kenwood. Okay, so now all my ingredients are in the bowl and now you can use this, so this is a generic setting, but you can also choose a pre-programmed program and they have this one here which is dough kneading which I'm going to use. Got the door hook attachment on. And now I'm going to need that for about five minutes. And I've got the warming off for now. Okay, now I press this middle button. It's done. Oh yeah. Okay, so now I've kind of pulled the dough into a nice bowl, dusted it with a little bit more flour, and now we're going to try the heating function. So, um, I think I might need to move the head down for that. Okay, so now we're going to prove dough. So I think there is a prit setting, dough proving. Now, that's the suggested heat for the bowl that they suggest. No mixing, and then we're going to prove it for about 30 minutes, I think, um, to start with. And that's it heating now. Okay, so this morning I'm going to try out the food process. I've got the, my stuff in here for a smoothie bowl. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it, I think, to two in terms of speed. Time, well, let's do about 20 seconds, 30 seconds to start with. There we go. Ooh. So I did have to use this thing to sort of mix things up, but it's looking pretty good. So oh, that's it all scraped out. Here's my blueberry smoothie bowl topped with some uh, grapes, almonds and chia seeds. This is probably one of my favourite breakfasts to make in the summer. So um, yeah, the recipe is on my blog, so make sure to, to give it a go. Okay, so it's time to use the final piece of equipment for my new Kenwood and that is the food processor. So I'm actually going to make some short crust pastry which um, normally I would rub together the flour and butter with my hands. Um, but then often you run the risk of it getting very warm. So I'm gonna try using the food processor to blitz it into breadcrumbs. I'm actually making a gluten-free um, short crust pastry. So I've got my gluten-free flour and I'm using some xanthan gum as well to keep it all together. But yeah, I'm gonna put on the lid now. 
and um, try to blitz it. Okay, so the lid's on, and now you've got this attachment, which I've already turned screwed onto the top of my Kenwood. And now I'm going to put the food processor on top and click that in somehow. Okay, so that's it properly and now so I've switched on um, my Kenwood. I've actually got a door proving in here but there's no attachment so um, once I turn it on although this thing starts spinning as well hopefully only the food press so processor comes on. So I'm going to turn it on to minimum for now and then just oh if you just press the knob without giving a time then it just counts up the time so let's try that. Good, like fine breadcrumbs to me. So let's put the lid back on. I suppose I could put it in whilst the lid was closed, but I'm gonna. There we go. I'm gonna put the egg in through the little funnel. So let's see how that goes. And now let's blitz that again and see if we can get a dough. Okay, and I think I'm going to leave it at that and finish it by hand. This is the fastest I have ever made shortcrust pastry. Look at that, it's so nice. Okay, well I definitely think food processor, thumbs up. Not bad. So it's been about a week that I've had my Kenwood. I've used uh, most of its functions. I've used um, mainly for making dough. So I've, I've used the weighing and I've used the proving function. Um, I've yet to make cake, but I'm sure that'll uh, come soon. Um, I've used the liquidizer, I've used my food processor, and so far I'm really happy with um, everything. It seems to be working, so that's a good sign. Um, if you do have any questions about it or want me to try something, then let me know in the comments under the video and I will try it and let you know how it works or anything else um, you want to know about the machine. But yeah, I'm sure it'll be featuring in a lot of my um, future videos. So yeah, I'll see you then.